Hello, fellow bag nerds. It's me, Amy, from Amy's Acquisitions. <laughs> Do you like my new channel name? Back for an unboxing. Hooray! So, I have received a couple bags recently which I have not videoed or unboxed. And I did take one video, which is kind of long and rambly, which I'm not sure if I'm going to post. Um, but I thought this one would be easy and fast. I'm not 100% sure which item this is. So we're about to find out together. Bought a few things lately on uh, Poshmark and eBay that were very inexpensive, that were not labeled correctly or mislabeled, but I thought I wanted to try out. And if I figured if it didn't work, I could sell it. But this is not one of those. I can feel through the bag what it is but I'm gonna have to put the camera down to slice it. One moment. Okay, we're back. And this person not only put it in the dust bag, they tied it. That's nice. Yeah. Check this bad boy out. If you're not using your feet during a one-handed unboxing, you're just not living. This is a mini Barlow in uh, Calypso. I have tried to order this bag from Dooney multiple times. You know the thing where you do a pre-order and then they cancel it and you get a discount and then you order something else and it's a pre-order also and then you wait two months and then they cancel that and they don't give you a discount the second time or at least they didn't for me and I'm just like god damn it. I cannot bring myself to pay full price for a mini Barlow there, up there. But I wanted this color, so I was just waiting for an opportunity, and it came up on Poshmark, uh, and I saw it very quickly and made an offer, and the person accepted, and I got it for something like 50 or $60 less even than the discounted price from my 30% my off, we screwed up your order discount on duty.com so I'm very pleased with this because I've been using my Kel um not Kelly my lime green mini Barlow a lot lately and I really like this style it is so carefree with the one exception of course if it's pouring you know it's not really protected in there but this is a beautiful color it has I think more green to it than it is showing up on on camera but if, you, if you're not familiar with the Mini Barlow, let me show it to you. This one really does appear to be, oh no, one of the flavor packets has burst. Eek. The other thing is if you turn the bag upside down, it'll leak. Um, this really does appear to be brand new, which is great. Because I've got a couple like new uh, bags recently, which were used and abused, and I had to send back. So... The Barlow, of course, uh, at like a couple other styles, Flynn and, and Brenna, I think. Aw, thank you, Note. Um, are some Dooney styles that have these side pockets with these beautiful like curved waves. But they also, they have these pockets so that stuff doesn't get buried in the bottom of your bag, which I love. Cause like you can put your sunglasses in here. This is the perfect size um, for your phone um, or whatever else you wanna have handy or separated. And then they also have this center section. And as you can see, I'm having to go like, uh, uh, to open this because it's the Safiano and it's new. But what I have learned is that this softens up quite quickly and becomes much more squishable and also stretchable. It doesn't take as much work. When I first got my new Key Lime Barlow, I was like, oh God, this is so annoying every time but it softens up and then you just have this great bag that's it's not really a mini size. I mean, let's compare it to the Bitsy Zip Zip. And like they appear to be about the same height, but if you look at them in terms of depth, there they're not remotely the same. <laughs> I also picked this guy up. I don't know, I never really feel comfortable calling a bag a her. I feel like things are, are masculine or neuter. 
This guy to me is not gendered, although I know everybody will tell me guy is gendered and that's a lie. But anyway, I got this double pocket outback for cheap. Uh, and it just, I just couldn't see that anyone was going to buy it and appreciate it. So I bought it and cleaned it. Uh, it was kind of dirty. I conditioned and cleaned it. I love the Cadillac leather care product so much better than Apple, by the way, and stuffed it and photographed it. And it's on eBay right now. The pebble grain Bristol that I sold, I bought it for 50, uh, because it was missing the tassels and the strap didn't match. Uh, and the person didn't know what they were doing, I guess, but I sold it for $200. So I was like, yes, that's awesome. So I'm hoping that this one goes for a nice amount too. I'm sure it'll be a profit. I did not pay much, but look how clean it is. It's so clean. It's just not the bag for me. If you know what I mean? It's just, it's just not my style. I appreciate this style, but I'm more of a crazy color, sleek style, less of this vintage, like, Indiana Jones professor of adventure style. If I had a tw if I was a tweed person, I would be all over this. Oh, these are hard to do with one finger. Uh, 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 my delicate finger joints try to slide out of socket, so I'm gonna stop that. But look, look how good this is. Like this is brass. Like it's real brass. It's cold. It's heavy. I think it's solid. And look how in good sh what good shape it's in. Definitely one that was not as in good shape, but was black and not navy. Sold for $200 on eBay recently. So we shall see if I make a profit off this one and use it to offset my bag habit. There is one other new bag I want to show you. <laughs> this is a Monticatini which is a line of leather from Dooney. Mont Dooney Monticatini button slouch something. I forget the whole name. It's a lot of words. I will put it in the box below. Uh, this bag, this, this line of bags is from, I think, 2013 or 2012. And so there's like legitimately nothing on the internet about them. It's like nothing existed then. It's so wild because anything else from 2012 on the internet you could find bags, it's all gone. Which is crazy to me that there's not some sort of Dooney Wikipedia articles or something. Uh, this bag is enormous. It actually measures when it's flat like this. 20.5 inches across from seam to seam from seam to shining seam and I bought it because of that because I've been looking for a bigger bag to uh, offset all my smaller bags um I need something that can com comfortably fit my iPad Pro I had the Zip Barlow I sold the Zip Barlow right because the Zip Barlow fit my iPad Pro barely and like I couldn't snap it anymore and it just the way it rode on my shoulder, I did not like that at all. So I was looking at totes and none of their totes, none of Dooney's totes are really big. Like they're not, they have weekenders, but a weekender is not like a bag. You just plop some stuff in and carry around. Their totes aren't very big. The weekender's not gonna work. I could not find anything that they, they had that I wanted. And then somehow I stumbled across this on eBay. I'm not sure how. Um, and I thought Monticatini. I've heard that. Who talked about Monticatini? And Mama Beach did a video on how much she liked Monticatini leather. And this is not the same type of Monticatini, I guess, than hers. It's a much thicker, uh, firmer, uh, and, and pebbled leather. But it is a very beautiful handmade bag. I mean, look at that hand stitching. And it is huge. And it has a short shoulder strap. So I wasn't sure how I was going to like it but it actually does fit on my shoulder. And because the bag's shape and it's soft, it actually hangs on my shoulder. So this bag has a divider. So it's three compartments. It's so floppy, it's really hard to fill. But it's got three huge compartments and a zip, one of them's a zipper. It's all lined with the leather and it's twill. The other Monte bags have a suede lining. Here's the 
made in Italy hot stamp in here. Little zipper pool tabs. Um, it's just super nice and it holds a lot. I actually got a small satchel in here and there was room to spare and I'm gonna do that trick again to show you. Not that there's any reason on earth why you would want to carry a small satchel inside another bag, but you could. And what's amazing about this bag is there's actually still room on the other side if you wanted to put like binders or a book in here. So I have this eight and a half by 11 um, binder thing that I, I have with Circa. It's the Circa brand of, um, I don't even know what you call them. You get a special punch and then you use these little discs to create your own binders and then you don't have to snap binders open all the time and closed and they're really awesome and I love them and it's huge, right? Uh, and I would like to be able to carry that without a wheelie suitcase. Remains to be seen whether I can tolerate carrying that on my shoulder or if I have to do it with my hand, but this will hold so much stuff that I think it's a keeper and I was really pleased with the price I paid. It has a couple flaws, but it's just a beautiful... I mean, it's just a beautiful leather and it just smells good and the seller disclosed you know the areas of wear that it had and it has this beautiful stitch detail on the handle i am unconvinced by these buttons i think these look silly i honestly think that this detracts from the look of the bag the other monticatini large bags from this line or from that era have um buckles or loops or things and i think that looks super classy i don't know where they're going with this but possibly this is why you never hear of this bag as being on someone's desirable list, whereas some of the other Montecatini bags people have been looking for forever. So, I mean, this this fits my iPad and then some. The iPad's, you know, 12 and a half inches wide. To get this out, I'm going to have to use two hands. But for size comparison, this book is the size of a magazine. Obviously, it's thicker, but just check that out. I mean, that would fit in there with this small satchel if I wanted to stuff it. And also by comparison, this is the Carrington pouch. Stand up. There you go. It is a very, very, very big bag. Oh, note to self. If you put a small satchel in another bag, it gets extremely heavy. <laughs> and I think that about wraps it up for my haul slash reveal slash outgoing video. I just really wanted to make it clear that here we have two bags coming in. Well, and this one came in as well. And then we have three bags going out. And I don't always talk about the stuff that I'm selling, but I just totted it up and I've sold uh, nine bags so far, 10 once this sells. Um, and several of them I've managed to sell at a profit, mostly, you know, very small, but some a bit larger. And I intend to, to keep doing that. And that's how I am keeping my bag habit in the same, like, number of dollars that I'm just recycling over and over again. And I'm not telling you this to justify it to you, but just to make it clear behind the scenes, because I hadn't thought about it, but... If you do just watch haul videos and they don't talk about where the money's coming from, it, it's like, well, how do they have so much money? Or like, what do they do with all those bags or things like that? And maybe we just don't think about, well, we sold the bag and now we just don't think about it anymore. So we don't think about mentioning it as I haven't really mentioned it before, um, except I'm going to sell this or that, but I've sold a bunch already and I bought more but that I can then turn around and sell because I get them at a really good price. So if you want to have a crazy bag habit, that's probably the discipline to learn is to find the deals and then sell them when you're done with them or to sell other stuff. Today, I just watched a couple items go through live auction at a, a local auction house where we consigned some chairs, vintage chairs and things. And they were uh, items that worked in our old office, but we have no place for it, our new place. And so I was very pleased that they made double what I bought them for. Because I've been doing this buy cheap, sell high thing for some time. And that's how I'm just keeping it all even. 
you know, revenue neutral, as they say in the business world. And I just wanted to reveal that because I, I don't think I've focused on it enough. And I think, you know, it would be better if we all talked about where the money comes from to a degree, because otherwise it just looks like the most rampant consumerism in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's how any of us really live. Um, but if you watch the videos, it sure seems that way. So that's a little insight into my finances. I, I don't know if that's helpful, but I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Or like if you have strategies for your bag money uh, or managing your bag collection, I would love to know what it is. Uh, hit me up in the comments. And if you enjoyed this and are interested in more bag videos, you know, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button because apparently I'm a like whore like literally everyone else on this place. Till next time. Bid more. 650, go on. Yes. More. Bid again. Come on, bid, 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 bid. What's happening? There we go, 425. I paid $200. 450, 475, go. Go, go, go. Yes, keep going. Yes, give me money. <laughs> Mama wants a profit. Yes. 800, go on 800, come on, come on, come on, 800. Come on, do it. You know you want it. Okay.